So much of our communication these days is online and written. So minus the body language, how do we know if the person we're corresponding with is being truthful? Well, here with the clues to help you separate the lies from the truth are WSJ reporter Elizabeth Bernstein and Tyler Cohen-Wood, senior officer with the Defense Intelligence Agency. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Elizabeth, let me jump in and start with you. Even if we are suspicious, research shows that we will often err on the side of being trusting. Why is that? It's, it's, that's the truth. We are often suspicious of online information, information we get in emails, even texts, but we will sort of override that. It's sort of our heart overrides our gut on that. And it, there's a lot of reasons for this, but one of them is evolutionary. And psychologists, evolutionary psychologists say humans have something called a truth bias. We thousands and thousands of years ago, it was very important that we took information at face value. So if we heard a big, loud, growling noise, it was very important that we took that to be a dangerous animal and ran instead of sort of analyzing out what else it could be. So that's remained with us, that um, desire sort of unconscious to take everything at face value. Even sometimes when the signs point that perhaps we shouldn't. Tyler, I'm going to ask you, some of your work is based on the premise that most people who are lying would prefer to be telling the truth, so they often slip themselves up. Is that right? That is absolutely true. It's sort of like I think a lot of us have have seen a lot on uh, how to read deception through body language, but in the online domain you don't have body language so really all you have to rely on are the words and the text and people they do, they want to tell the truth, and so there's always going to be clues and giveaways that someone is maybe being deceptive with you in this domain. So let's get to those clues um, in written material, because obviously there are different clues when you're analyzing someone's body language. And Tyler, you suggest yes. a modified version of a law enforcement technique. Let's go through some of the steps. Lots of emphatic or repetitious language. That can be a, a red flag, right? That can definitely be a red flag. If someone in, say, a dating profile, a three-paragraph dating, dating profile tells you three times that they want to meet new people, they, they might not necessarily be lying, but that's very important to them. And they may not even realize that they put it in so many times, but they want for you to know that. Mm -hmm. Or if they use um, adverbs or really emphatic words like, this is really, really, or oh, I, I really feel this way, or this is very important. They want you to understand that that is important to them. Right. And, and they want it to be important to you as well. And you also mentioned distancing. The person leaves themselves out of the response. And if you ask them a question, they leave the question mm -hmm. unanswered. Using noncommittal words like maybe and I think so, these are all red flags, correct? These are all red flags. And, and it works the same with body language. If I'm uncomfortable and I'm lying about something I'm saying, I might physically distance myself from you by crossing my arms or putting a purse between me and you. Well, people do this with words too. They might distance themselves from the story they're telling you by literally just not putting themselves in the story. Right. Like if you say, you know, were you the last person to leave? They might say, well, it looks like the door didn't get locked last night. They right. won't put themselves in the story. And and also, I just want to say really quickly, because we're running short on time, tense hopping. I thought that was fascinating. When someone tells you a story, they start out in oh, the yes. past tense and switch to the present tense. That means they're making it up as they go or can indicate that they're making it up. Absolutely. That is one of the most interesting things. If, if you ask someone a story and they're telling you the story from the past, they're using a part of their brain and they're seeing the story as it happened in the past. So they'll use past tense words. But if suddenly they're lying, they're making something up, they're seeing it as it's happening in the present and they might flop into past and present tense words. So you can tell where the lie happens based on the tense hopping of the word. Fascinating. And Elizabeth, you have some specific tips for online online dating, correct? Can you give us a few of those? So these were tips that Tyler had shared with me. You want to go ahead and make sure fairly quickly that you get that person on the phone or Skype so you can see that they're real. Uh, there are um, There's applications or software online you can download to put their photo in and it will tell you exactly if they have 
forgotten to disable the data access on their phone. It will tell you when and where that photo was taken, so you get a sense of if you know that's the truth. If if the photo was taken where they say they live, um, you want to ask a lot of questions. Someone who tells you they live a certain town should know a lot about that town, restaurants, landmarks, local history. So you want to just keep overriding sort of your heart's uh, uh, wish to make sure to to believe it. You want to be suspicious. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Elizabeth and Tyler, for all those important tips.